Now, as you know, some tasks have to happen before other tasks can take place. So we can create what are called dependencies between your tasks and basically indicating that this task here, design and planning, has to happen before we get our sample approval. So therefore, design and planning will be our predecessor and sample approval will be the successor. So in order to connect these two tasks to one another, so when I move around design and planning, sample approval won't accidentally be overlapped, I can either hover over the task and find that little dot and then I can click and drag it to the other task that is dependent on it. So here it's saying that sample approval is dependent on design and planning. So if I move around design and planning, sample approval will also be moving around with it. Therefore, they will never overlap unless I intend for them to. Another way that you can set up dependencies is simply by clicking on one of your tasks and then adding your before and after dependencies here. So my before dependency, in this case for my bids and contract task, would be sample approval. I have to get the sample approval before we can begin the bids and contracts. So I'm going to select sample approval in here as a before dependency and you'll notice that the arrow is created. I can also add an after dependent, so in this case after bids and contracts is when contract execution can take place, so contract execution will then be my after dependent. All right, and then another thing that I can point out here is we do have some additional tools within your dependencies as well. So you have the ability to preserve lag time. Let's take a look at what that looks like. There may be a time where you want to make sure that there are a certain number of days between two tasks that could be lag time or slack time. In this case, let's create that dependency here, but let's make sure that we maintain those days between these two tasks. Otherwise, if I move around collect deposit, it's not ever gonna overlap obtain permits, but it could reduce the lag time between them. So we'll just click and we'll open one of these tasks here. And you'll notice that next to this dependency that's listed, we have the ability to lock or preserve the lag time. When I click that, this arrow turns blue and therefore is showing us that that lag time is locked. Whenever I move the, the predecessor task, then the successor will actually maintain the distance. All right, this is extremely helpful too. Uh, if I go to collect deposit here, and maybe I create a dependency. You'll see that's a broken dependency because those are overlapping. If it was right here, it would not be broken. <laughs> so in this case though, I actually want to be able to collect the deposit anytime during my contract execution phase. So what I could do is I could actually append this dependency to the beginning of the contract execution task. So let's open that up. We'll notice in the contract execution dependency here, I can then anchor the to the dependency start. That changes where the dependency is connected to. So in this case, if I anchor it to the start, it's saying that collecting the deposit can happen anytime after the start of the contract execution task. So if I move around contra contract execution, it's gonna make sure that collecting deposit never happens before the start date of that task. However, if I did want to maintain that lag time and just collect the deposit on the last day of the contract execution task, I can still do that and lock that dependency here. So now it's blue and you'll notice if I move around the contract execution task that collect deposit actually will just maintain the lag time from that start date. As always, if you have any questions, contact your customer success manager or email support at jobtrud.com and we will be happy to help.